Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi, and yes, sometimes you will see my wife Romain or my daughters Jolie, Juna or Jessa in the video as well guys. Uh, today's video, again, the old concept, five things. One, we talk about some Bitcoin charts. Two, I will give you a trading tip. Three, I will talk about some news. Four, I will give you a travel tip. And five, I will tell a story about what we experienced in the last seven of travels. Maybe we'll help you to decide what to do in life, guys. Now, let's quickly jump into the first part over here. Bam. first part guys is the news now there is not like huge news i want to talk about but the news is that jolie and i are back again in portugal we had an amazing week in singapore guys we met all of the crypto guys again over there uh, we were invited by bybit to the bybit reload 2023 event uh, which included watching the race watching Max Verstappen for the first time since like 12 times lose and not become the first uh, he still did a very amazing race guys it was really cool to see Jolie connect with the crypto community for the first time as she was 18 years old now so she could really join us to all the parties um, there was even one crypto influencer of the same age as Julie, yeah, even a little bit younger, CryptoKid. Uh, Julie had some great, great chats with CryptoKid. Really cool to see the young people in this industry connecting and that young people have the future. And that is my news for today. I believe that we as a crypto industry should focus way more on young kids because they have the future, guys. You and I, when we grew up as a kid, we got this huge piggy bank with 25 euros with probably a toy or something else from your bank. And that is how we got hooked into the banking system. That is how they got us hooked to them. That's why we were using them for years because our parents brought us there and made us happy with a piggy bank account with some funds in it that we could spend in the store for the first time with this card. Now, I believe that the crypto industry should focus on that area. We should teach the children from 12 years old how to have a Bitcoin, but also make it possible for them to spend Bitcoins. Yes, let's give or create debit cards that are accessible for children from 12 years old. I know Bitsa has a Bitsa Young card that's 14 years old, so that's already good. But I believe the 12 years should be the moment that these kids already get sucked into this beautiful, amazing industry of Bitcoin, guys. Now, that was the news for today. Let's jump into the next part. Bam! The first chart, guys, I'm going to share with you guys is this one, of course, the Gaussian channel, because the last couple of weeks I analyzed everything based on that Gaussian channel. And again, you can see it's beautifully playing out. Like I said, guys, yes, we touched that midline of the Gaussian channel with a beautiful wick, a long wick, small body. We are reversing again to the top side. I thought at that moment, yeah, that top will then probably be around $27,900, where you are getting near. At the moment, the top is at 28 k level exactly. So yes, we need to break out of this Gaussian channel for me on the five day chart to get even more bullish again. If we are uh, running into resistance at that top green line, then yes, we could be pulling back again to the midline. But for me, I believe that we are going to break that resistance and push it all the way up above 30k again. Now let's jump into the next chart, the second chart, guys. This chart is showing you the Bitcoin price. It's showing you the gold price and the SPX, guys. Now, people always say to me, Didi, uh, Bitcoin only pumps because the central banks like the Fed or any other central banks, they print a shitload of money and then that uh, pump, pumps the Bitcoin price. Yes, there is a correlation. We can see if we look back into history that there is a correlation between Bitcoin uh, and the printing of money. But the more important part that you should understand is why is that correlation not there for gold or the SPX? Orange line is gold. The blue line is the SPX. Shouldn't they also have pumped like Bitcoin? Bitcoin since 2012 made like, for example, 9,000%. Did gold or the SPX make 9,000%? No, they didn't. Bitcoin outperformed them massively. And in my honest opinion, because the limited market cap of Bitcoin of 21 million Bitcoins, it will keep outperforming gold and any other stock out there. So yes, I believe there is a correlation between printing money and uh, investment in assets, but I see that the investment in Bitcoin 
is way more successful than investment in any of these other assets. So if there is a correlation, then the best performer of that correlation is still Bitcoin. Pause the video and analyze it for yourself to understand it even better. Now, then we have this chart. This is not a chart, but it's like educational. I saw it on Lisa and Edwards Twitter, good Twitter account, uh, very educational Twitter account. Um, these candlestick patterns are very important to understand. These candlesticks, these candlesticks show you where the price is going to go. Is it a bullish one or is it a bearish one? If you want to have more knowledge about trading, then make sure you understand these candlestick patterns. I'm not going to explain them all to you. You just pause the video, analyze them, or make a screenshot, put it on your desktop, so you can always relate to these kinds of candlesticks. But you can see the difference between a hammer, or an inverted hammer, or a dragonfly, or a bullish uh, spinning top. All of these candles have a, a bullish or a bearish influence on the market. Very important to understand. Now, then I have this one, guys, also important. Um, the institutions that now all filed for a Bitcoin ETF, it's becoming more and more. We can see BlackRock with 10 trillion, Fidelity, Fidelity with 4.5 trillion, Franklin Templeton 1.5 trillion, Invesco 1.5, and then a few with multi billions. Now, in total, it's now already 17.7 trillion us dollar that perhaps will get access because of a spot etf in bitcoin to bitcoin guys which means a shitload of money is about to flow into the market and when a shitload of money flows into a market where the offer stays the same there is not going to be more bitcoins printed quicker or sooner or faster it's not possible it's always programmed how many bitcoins can come to the market daily and it's going to decrease massively from April 2024. So it's going to be less and less and less Bitcoins coming new to the market. And more and more and more of these institutions that want to buy these Bitcoins. When there is not a lot of offer, but a shitload of demand, the prices will increase. This money, a huge part of that money, could start to go into the Bitcoin market, guys. And that is why you should be buying now. I hope you really enjoyed these charts, guys. Yes, these charts are showing us exactly what I have been telling you all the time. We are bottoming out. You should be buying Bitcoin. This is a massive moment just before the halving. Bitcoin will again do this beautiful cycle, repeat what we did before, probably from the halving in April 2004, go to higher levels. You can still buy Bitcoin now at 25, 6, 7K levels at the moment. Last week was 25K, now it's already 27K. If you wait even longer, it will be maybe higher. And it's very important for you to understand, it's not just about buying Bitcoin, it's about living the Bitcoin standard. If you are all in like me, Bitcoin is your main capital. There is no other capital on banks, in euros and all that other stuff. Maybe in USDT or USDC or in another other stable called like DAI. But Bitcoin should be your core capital. It's deflationary store of value that is mimicking the gold of the 21st century, that should be your capital. Of course you can diversify a little bit in real estate, or a little bit of physical gold, but why would you diversify into fiat currencies that are inflationary and that are making you poor? The charts are nice, but you need to understand the bigger picture of Bitcoin. It should be your standard capital. Let's jump into the next part. Bam! my trading tip for today guys is very simple if you don't have the time to do ta then don't become a trader or either follow a very trustable trader and the signals he is posting don't think you can become a trader in a night like this you need to be able to read the charts, to analyze the charts, and then make decisions on which trades you take. And if you don't have the time to do TA, technical analyze of that chart, then don't become a trader. Then maybe sign up for some kind of a beautiful signal group where a trader is telling you when to buy and when to sell his Bitcoins, and where you can analyze why he's buying or selling the Bitcoins. But don't think you can just like look at the chart one, two seconds, ah, I think it's going up. That is what we call a casino. You don't want to be in a casino. If you don't have the time to do TA yourself, 
then either follow someone that does really trustable TA or signals or just be an investor just buy Bitcoin for the long term sell around the top somewhere in 2025 and buy back around the bottom somewhere in 2026 27 if you don't have the time to trade then please don't make the mistake that you can think that you're a trader because you will lose big time 90% of the people will lose 90% of their capital within 90 days that's like a standard rule 90 90 90 but if you don't have the time don't pretend to be a trader the trading tip of today bam The travel tip for today, guys, has also to do with diversification because if you travel, make sure you have access to different sources of assets. So, for example, have a little bit cash, have a little bit if you have a bank account on your bank account. I hope you don't, but if you have, yeah, be happy with it and have some cash there as well on your bank account. Have crypto, uh, have, for example, debit cards and credit cards. So, diversify the ways you can spend your capital when you travel because there are countries that don't accept debit cards there are countries where your bank card will not be accepted at the ATM and there are card countries where you won't be able to spend cash so do realize that if you travel to a country you have never been and you don't know how they locally transact value then make sure you have all of those values a little bit like you have a little bit on your bank you have a little bit in cash you have a little bit on a debit card or a credit card and a massive amount of bitcoins of course because bitcoins you can spend all over the world by now and if you can't spend them you can always exchange them at a bitcoin atm or at a beautiful bam bam beach bar or wherever you think that you can connect to the crypto community you can change bitcoin to for local cash guys then there is a, an item that i want to talk about with you guys is like you need to realize that also we as a family not always make the right decisions Sometimes we, we royally screw up the thing that we do. But for us, screwing up or doing or taking the wrong decision is not the opposite of success. The thing that you need to understand that failure is not the opposite of success. Failure is part of the success. Because there is failure along the way, you create success. Failure is needed to have success. We failed many times in many things that we did. But in the end, it led to the success that we are having now as a family. We didn't come here like bam, like this. There were a lot of hiccups in those last seven years that you could see as failure, that I saw as part of the road to success. So, my inspirational tip for today is don't think that failure is the opposite of success. It is part of success. Every time you fall down or make a mistake, you get up and do it better. And that, at the end, will lead to a massive amount of success. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is part of success. Bam. And I still need to answer a question of one of the followers, guys. The question that was asked a couple of times is, uh, Didi, do you like the new Nano Ledger update? Uh, and I think you're referring to the update where Nano Ledger makes it possible to online backup your private keys. Uh, at least I assume you mean that because I can't see anything else in your question. The Ledger made it not possible um, that you sign up to this recovery service for your private key guys so uh, normally you have that key somewhere in your safe or somewhere like cut in multiple pieces and give it to a notary whatever you do um, with your um, ledger seed phrase your private key i don't know but they now are going to offer the possibility for you to do that at ledger online now and to do that they needed to upgrade and that upgrade now led into a lot of fuss that people now think, wow, they have fully access to your Bitcoin and to everything else and they shouldn't be able to do it. I agree, a hardware wallet should never be able to access your private key because that should be something that's created when you create your wallet, then you create your private key. Nobody should ever see that. It should be all in your custody. So if they upgrade it in the way that they now have access to your full private key or your seed phrase, I don't believe that is a positive thing. 
but they on the other hand say no 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 it's fully encrypted we can't see it it's just an extra service to have a backup so you don't need to travel with your seed trays and then again i say okay that is very safe because a lot of people that i know that travel they're always like okay what do i do where do i store my bitcoins not on a ledger but where do i store the backup somewhere else in the world in a safe so yes there's multiple companies doing this now so maybe it would be better to store it on a third-party company that has now access to your hardware wallet. So for example, there's a company called Inherity. I've been talking to them for the last couple of weeks and they offer you the same service. So you can take your encrypted, uh, seed, your encrypted seed phrase and store it in their online service. For me, offline is still the best way, guys. A paper wallet or a steel wallet somewhere on a beautiful safe, somewhere stored in a safe, I think it's the safest way. But you know, for those that do want a little bit more like security, how do you call it? Like a little bit more comfort, not like being able to lose your seat phrase yet, then you could use these services. I would never use myself the service from the hardware ledger itself because then everything is in the hands of one company and I would not do that. I would always diversify. So that is the answer to that question. Always remember to ask questions because I will answer the questions in the video the day after. <sighs> Too much talking. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed all the information. If you did all enjoy all the information, then give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and leave a comment. Please ask questions so I can answer them in the next video. Um, if you want to trade, use the Bybit link. And not because I was invited by Bybit, because it's just the best exchange out there. I've been testing all the exchanges. It is by far the best. And now with that Bybit debit card, the video I already posted this morning, oh my God, that is gonna change the game for Bybit big time. Because now you can buy Bitcoin, you can trade Bitcoin, and you can spend your Bitcoins using their Bybit debit card. If you wanna get access to the card, use my link down below you will get beautiful access with some bonuses over there thanks for watching and see you tomorrow again